Uh, good morning, everybody, and uh, thanks very much for calling us here for this presentation. We were, um, we're, we've been enjoying being involved in the process so far. So my name is Anne Devitt. I'm from the School of Education in Trinity College. This is uh, Kieran Sims from the School of Engineering, Trinity College, and this is Brenda McGurk from Learnovate, a research centre also of the Trinity, uh, from Trinity College. And I'll just raise it now. Our colleagues from UCC and NUIG were unable to attend for various, for uh, a set of reasons, but we have them listed here. And, uh, you can see them up above, but I'll come to that in a moment. Um, so first of all, to unpack our title. So we're looking at STEM identities, so the identity of uh, STEM students within their programmes as they develop um, as uh, to graduates. And we're looking at STEM as a unified discipline, so science, technology, engineering, and maths. We're looking in particular at the common entry courses, so where the many uh, students coming in in first year and then distributing out at around third year into their specific disciplines. Um, the key point here is that we're looking at integrating learning with so socialisation for the students. So it's not only about the academic content, but also about the kind of interpersonal and interactive part of the course. Um, and our proposed solution, although we haven't ex Expanded on this here because it's in fact a process that we're defining um, through this project is uh, some form of online system, so digital supports for collaboration, peer-to-peer uh, -peer learning, and in order to build community. Those are the things that we are interested in and want to uh, achieve. So our team come from the three institutions, NUIG, UCC and Trinity, uh, and from uh, a range of STEM disciplines. So we have uh, engineers, uh, Annette Hart from NUIG and uh, Kieran Sims from Trinity, and we have immunologists, we have Clean O'Farrelly from Trinity, we have computer scientists, Mary Sharp from Trinity, we have botanists, uh, Betty Higgs from UCC, and so on. We also have um, academics from the field of education, so from the School of Education in Trinity there's myself and my colleague um, who works in STEM education, uh, Colette Murphy. And also we have educational technologists, and here we have Brenda from Learnovate, um, we also have her colleagues in Learnovate, and Tom O'Hara from UCC. So a number of people involved in putting this project together from a range of, uh, with a range of expertise. So this expertise is disciplinary, it's educational, and it's educational technology. Um, and also what's important in here is we bring expertise uh, through Trinity, the School of Education, and through UCC, their work uh, on funded TNL projects. Um, we bring expertise on professional development uh, for educators, and in particular in higher education, because this is a key point for all of us, I think, is we might um, develop excellent projects, but to get that to roll out into a university uh, context is certainly not seamless. Um, and we also have expertise on peer-assisted learning uh, protocols coming from NUIG, who do excellent work on face-to-face -face, um, peer learning scenarios with their uh, engineering students. So the problem space for us is the STEM common entry programs. And the issue in here is that the students report a lack of identity with their discipline until they engage with their specific discipline. So that's already three years usually into their program. Um, so this lack of identity can lead to, among other things, low engagement. And that uh, can be realized as poor attendance. It can lead to poor outcomes for students. And certainly it leads to high attrition rates. So all of these things are negative outcomes, not all stemming from issues with identity, but certainly drawing from that, from that issue in that <coughs> students don't identify with the work that they are doing yet. It's too disparate. Um, so our envisaged solution is in fact a process. So this project uh, sets out a process to engage students and the other stakeholders in the institutions to design the solution to this problem space, if you like. So um, we've taken, a, I guess, an engineering um, design model, the CDIO design process, which I'll come to in a moment. And most importantly, I think, we're, we're taking on the student voice methodology as a means of engaging our students in the process to give them ownership of this project and hopefully to allow them to engage then with uh, the rollout of the potential pilot. And we'll be looking to pilot the solution um, across three institutions. So the CDIO design uh, cycle, so it's a user, you know, a, a user-centered design process. The initial, the C of the CDIO is to conceive, you know, it's that kind of user-centered uh, part where you're trying to do needs analysis, uh, followed by design, implementation, and operate. So in our case, 
I can read it better up here than, than down here, but I'm sorry, it's very tiny. In our, in our case, the conceive uh, part of the design cycle is about engaging the students, the academics, the technologists, and everyone who will be involved with the modules in exploring the problem space and also potential solutions. So we're not delivering a solution here. We're looking for, our, for all of the people involved, in particular the students, to come together to look at what solutions might offer. So this would allow us to identify specific needs and also to see, make sure that we're not redesigning uh, you know, existing technology and that we're using technology that, the students, that aligns with what the students do and believe in their own um, learning and in their own personal lives. So the design phase then is where we take the outputs of that conceive phase and we specify the technical and academic um, requirements for this uh, for the, for the module that we're going to implement. So we are going to look to implement a solution in one use case module in three different institutions. So this design phase is about the technology but also about the academic content of that course, course, um, module and aligning those two and uh, ensuring that our, it's well specified. The users again come into that phase as a focus group, as an advisory group to make sure that the de design is actually meeting the needs of, this, of students and other stakeholders. The implementation phase is about prototyping the solution. So within the work plan we have a number of prototype phases. So again, uh, coming back and around to the users to make sure that what we do prototype and design is meeting specified needs. Um, and also at that point we'll be designing the professional development strategy for um, to ensure that the, the solution can roll out within the universities with the staff involved. The final operate phase is to trial within the three institutions, so in UCC, um, NUIG and uh, Trinity, to trial this pilot module, so an online collaborative peer learning system within, embedded within an ap academic module and to evaluate the outcomes for students. So at the first, um, we'll be looking to compare outcomes for students in the pilot phase with students who are currently going through their first year now. So we would run an evaluation at the end of this academic year, which we could then compare with um, outcomes at the end of the next academic year, again in the three institutions. So the student voice methodology, just to give you a little, uh, a little taste of what that's about, essentially the, the motto, if you like, of that is nothing about us without us. So it's about a sense of democracy and ownership within uh, not only higher education, but primary, secondary, and so on, but within education, where those individuals who are uh, most important in the education system, which is those who are learning, um, uh, it's a, a methodology to allow them to take ownership for where their education system might go, to engage in leading that process. And one of the key elements here is that those involved in the project have to display authentic listening. So it's not the fact that we bring in user groups, we sit them down, we record them and you know, we, we listen to what they say and we bring that into the, the design. The authentic part of that is that that rolls back out to the students so that they're aware of having, how we're responding to um, what they have raised in, their, in the sessions with them. So there's a constant feedback loop from the students and uh, other stakeholders back to them to ensure that that ownership, which is based on respect, um, shows that we are listening and we are um, responding to what is coming up from those voices. So the project structures, um, and across all of these projects there are a number of collaborators and certainly the, the management structure for that has to be, is key to success. So our project management stru structure is aligned around uh, Learnovate, uh, an educational the Educational Technology uh, Research Centre in Trinity, taking the project management piece of that and engaging all of the, the other partners uh, to draw on the expertise from the other partners. And they'll also take the Educational Technology lead, having um, a long history of expertise in this field. Um, we'll have a steering group to advise on the pedagogical, academic and the technical direction of the project. So within that we have this range of expertise that is disciplinary, uh, educational and educational technology and all of those will be brought, brought to bear through the steering group which will uh, work with Learnovate, um, with the project management structure of Learnovate. Um, the advisory panel which will begin at the conceive phase is essentially the stakeholders, 
Um, within that, I keep saying students and stakeholders because the students are prob essentially the key members of this. So we want the advisory panel of students and staff members who will be involved to continue their engagement throughout the process. So very much at the conceive phase, but coming back at key points throughout the project in order to feed back um, uh, our responses to their issues, but also to feed back uh, around the evaluation process and around the success, potential success of the project. Um, the, the final set of structures, if you like, or the si final people involved are, are the those academic staff who will be involved in the pilot. And so they're going to work to embed the project into an academic module across three institutions. So we're going to have to work very closely with them in order for this to be embedded. And this is not a once-off workshop professional development model, which the research would show does not work. This is, a, a, again, around community building with with our academics to see how we can move, how we can embed this new process, because it would be a big change, and changes that, are, uh, that involve changes to belief and so on are very difficult to embed, and this is something that we're going to be working very hard to do within the project. In terms of deliverables um, for this project, the first deliverable, if you like, is uh, the environment, collaborative peer learning environment, which is uh, supported digitally and intended to support student learning and community building. So it will be embedded within an academic module, but also very much focused on building relationships between students. The second development, uh, second deliverable rather, is the professional development strategy and the workshops with academic staff. So I say strategy because it's not just about a single workshop. It would be, it's a process that we see um, staff engaging with through uh, the following academic year through the pilot process. Uh, the third deliverable is essentially the methodology ar around which we're going to engage our students. So there's, a, you know, there's work on this in higher education, in particular um, Alison Cook Sather and one of my colleagues in uh, the School of Education, Paula Flynn. So this methodology is something that we see as being potentially transformational within higher education. It's a way of bringing students in and allowing them to lead change. Uh, so this is a deliverable, how to design and lead change with students in a student voice approach is one of the deliverables for this project. Um, the fourth is guidelines for adoption of this environment. So the environment, of course, there are very strict guidelines around open, the open source or uh, proprietary nature of anything that's developed within these projects. And so um, the environment itself has to be available to other institutions to use, and in order for it to be usable, there have to be very clear and specific guidelines about how to deliver that in combination with the professional development strategy. Um, and uh, the final piece then is around the evaluation instruments that we wish to use. So we are looking to reuse existing instruments to measure student engagement and transfer transferable skills and so on. But again, we'll be engaging the students in working through these instruments to ensure that they are, in fact, um, assessing and delivering the kind of information that we need in order to uh, assess the outcomes of the project. In terms of the outcomes, so rather than deliverables, the, the non-tangibles, what we're looking to achieve with this project is uh, improved student engagement um, within this trial module. Uh, and a qualitative evaluation of students' sense of identity and well-being within their discipline. So this is not something that's very easily measured. Uh, am I okay for time? No? One minute, okay. Um, stakeholder ownership of the STEM Identities project, so building in, uh, drawing in the students, into the pro students and stakeholders into the project, and the staff development piece, which is very important around change. If we look to ensure that change is lasting, the staff, the staff development piece is essential. Um, in terms of national impact, we're looking at one scalable solution that could deliver for all STEM students. So all of our universities have STEM common entry courses, all of our universities have these same problems. And this project embeds a solution within the academic content, so it's not separate from it, it's embedded within it. And why should this have national impact? Well, um, let me Google it for you. The, uh, why does Ireland need STEM graduates? I mean, we've all been talking about it here, but STEM workers are driving innovation and so on. It's very important for our economy. And this isn't just coming from the, the Google sources, but from national strategies and so on. That STEM 
is key, STEM graduates are key, and the demands for STEM graduates is only going to increase in coming years, growing by up to 8% um, up to 2025. So what we hope to deliver for national impact is lower attrition rates for STEM graduates, graduates with better disciplinary knowledge, graduates with better enabling skills or better 21st century skills through the collaborative part. Uh, and the final piece is around our institutions themselves. Uh, too much text here, but essentially we want to embed these changes, embed changes to practice within our, our institutions. And this can only deliver more competitive and more successful institutions. So. Thank you from our team, and I hope I've maybe met the time. Yeah, thank you very much. Thank you.